There's this one animation style that I see everywhere. It's like an image gallery with a mouse interaction and it creates this effect of floating images. So I decided to give my own twist on it. And who knows, maybe it's going to inspire you to create an amazing animation. So the concept is we're going to have three main planes, then we'll stack them on top of each other's and we'll animate each one of them using the request animation frame, the linear interpolation and GSAP and all of that inside of a Next.js application. And as always, the source code and the live demo are all available in the description below. So here I'm creating a Next.js application using npx create next app with the latest flag. I remove everything from the page.js, the page module CSS and the global CSS to start with a nice blank application. Then the first thing I want to do here is to statically import all of the images. That way, when using the next image, I'll be able to specify a certain width and use the natural height of the images. And now I'm going to be rendering three planes and I'm going to put all of the images inside of them. I'm creating the three planes. I specify a certain width and next automatically provides a height using the natural aspect ratio of the image. Then I add some styling, adding a different brightness to each planes and setting the top and left position of all the images using the nth of type Soto class. And here we can see the result. We have a nice layout of images and the three different planes have a different brightness, so it gives like this sense of perspective. Then we're ready for the exciting part, which is to add the mouse interaction. So here, instead of moving all of the images individually, what we're gonna do is move the three planes, and that way we are more efficient, like performance-wise. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is create three references to the different planes. So what I can do here is add a on mouse move, and then I can, can trigger a function like manage mouse move with the event, and it has the event as a parameter and I can come here and extract the movement X and the movement Y of the mouse. And then we're going to use the GSAP set function to set a new styling to the three planes. So what I'm going to do here is npm install GSAP just to install Greensock. And then what I can do here is a GSAP set and then I can target, for example, the first plane. And then I need to do dot current because it's a reference to be plus equal to the movement of the mouse and then I'm going to do the same thing for the Y axis and then I can import GSAP and then if I try this here we can see that I am now moving the plane on mouse move but now it's it's a bit crazy right so I'm going to create here a speed value and then I can just multiply it here by the speed and now we have something that makes a bit more sense but like this is not enough so maybe 0.1 and now we can see that our images are moving with the mouse and we can now do the same thing for the two other planes and with that we are now moving all of the images and what we can do to create like variations between the animation is to simply add another value and i'm going to reduce the speed by even more for the second plane and then reduce by even more for the third plane we now have this nice floating image gallery and honestly we could leave it at that we would have a nice floating gallery with not a bunch of code but i'm personally not satisfied with this animation because there is no easing the images are all moving directly with the mouse and to me it's not that smooth it's not that polished so it's like how can we create this easing inside of a mouse event what we're gonna have to do is start using the request animation frame so the first thing we can do here to convert the animation is to create a couple of variables here the first one we're gonna need is an x force a y force and we're also gonna need a request animation frame id which will be at null at first and that way we can track whenever the animation is on and whenever the animation is off and then i'm going to create here an animate function and instead of setting here uh, the plane directly inside of the mouse event i'm going to set it inside of the animate function and then i'm going to replace the values here the movement x and the speed by the x force and then the same thing for the y axis and then that animate function will be a recursive function meaning it's going to call itself and then inside of the mouse event I'm going to increment the X force by the movement X multiplied by the speed thing, but with the other axis. And then I can check if there is no request animation frame currently, then I want to trigger a new one. For that, I can simply do request animation frame of the animate function. And then we can try this. Let's see if that works. I'm going to reduce the speed here by 10. And then we have something not too bad, but the image here are just floating like they're in space. We need to add like some friction or something like that. And so that's where the linear interpolation comes in. Now, maybe some of you saw this concept in like your math class. I remember I saw this in school and I was like, I'm never going to use this ever in my life. And I was wrong because I'm using it right now. And the good news is we can simply do like the linear interpolation in JavaScript and then we can find its form 
in the JavaScript language instead of being a mathematical language like this. And then we can have it here as a function. And to make this a bit more understandable, I'm going to change the values here. I'm going to have start, end, and amount. And now I can use the linear interpolation here to gradually reduce the x-force and the y-force. So I can do the x-force is equal to the linear interpolation of the x-force towards zero. And then I can have a certain amount. And I'm going to call that amount easing. And I can have it to be 0.08, which is 8%. And so now the x-force at every single frame will be reduced by 8%. And then I can do the same thing for the y-force. And we can see the images are just gradually stopping by themselves. And that's because, well, the x-force and the y-force are now gradually being reduced. So honestly, this animation now looks much more polished and I personally prefer it much more in that way. But there's a problem that we have now that we didn't have before. And that is that we have a request animation frame that's running like 24 seven. Right now, I'm not moving my mouse, but we still have a request animation frame that's constantly setting the position of the plane, which is in terms of performance, not really wise. And so we need to find a way here in the code to basically cancel the request animation frame when we don't need it. So now we need to understand that our X-force and our, and our Y-force will never actually reach zero. It will always be a value that's approaching zero, but never zero. And so what we can do is simply check if the x-force is smaller than 0.01, then we're like, okay, that's that's enough. It's basically zero. So we're gonna reset the x-force to zero. And then same thing for the y-force. But we need to understand that sometimes the force is negative because we can move our mouse on like two directions. So sometimes it can be negative. And so we need to check the absolute value of it. And with that, we can now add a little logic that if the x-force is bigger than zero or the y force is bigger than zero then and only then do we want to recall an instance of the animation and else we basically want to cancel the request animation frame and we conveniently had an id here and then we can reset the id to null we now have the same thing that we had before but we can be assured that we won't have like a request animation frame running in the background for nothing and with that we have the final animation here a nice floating images gallery if you learned something, leave a like, subscribe. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.